Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Hawaiian chili pepper water. Hawaiian chili peppers are native to Hawaii, and they're in the frutescen species, along with Tabasco peppers, making them very comparable in their heat level. If you don't have Hawaiian chili peppers on hand, you can also use Thai red chilies or any small Asian red chili pepper. Um, you could also use bird's eye chilies. They will all work just fine in this recipe. Hawaiian chili pepper water is not really a hot sauce, it's more of a splashy table sauce, and you might find it situated next to the ketchup or the soy sauce in various Hawaiian restaurants and diners. In its most basic form, Hawaiian chili pepper water is just chilies, salt, and water, but today I'm going to be making a very unique fermented version. This recipe is from one of our favorite cookbooks, Fiery Ferments, and I will leave a link to this book in the description below if you want to try out any of the other fermented recipes. And it is worth noting that this is a very simple ferment recipe. If you're new to fermenting, this is a very basic recipe to start with. You don't even need to burp the ferment, and it only takes one to two weeks to make. So we acquired our Hawaiian chili peppers from Hawaii. Fun fact, we actually have the Hawaiian chili pepper overwintering downstairs in the basement this year. We noticed that the pods were taking a very long time to ripen, so we're going to try to give it a little bit of a head start next year. All you need to make a double batch of this Hawaiian chili pepper water is 10 to 20 small chilies, four slices of peeled ginger root, two cloves of garlic, four cups of unchlorinated water, and two tablespoons of salt, and two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Now it is important to use unchlorinated or bottled water instead of tap water because it will affect the fermentation process. And also do not cut back on the level of salt in this recipe. That is also very important for making a safe ferment. So I am using a quart size ball jar that I boiled for about 10 minutes just to make sure it was extra clean. And I'm gonna start by making the brine, which is very simple. All you need to do is add the salt to the water. So now that the brine is made, I'm going to crush all of the ingredients and place them into the jar. Now with all of the ingredients crushed, I'm going to add them to the jar. I should probably be wearing gloves for this, but we're daredevils here at Pepper Geek. Then you just have to pour the brine right over the ingredients in the jar. So I'm going to seal this up, and you do not have to burp this ferment at all. It only takes a week or two for the flavors to develop. When you start to notice that it's turning cloudy and it has a pickle-like acidity, at that point you're going to add the rice vinegar. So I'm going to let this sit in a cool, dark place without any direct sunlight, and we're going to come back in a week or two and see how it's doing, add the rice vinegar, and then give it a taste. You can also come back every few days and give it a little swirl and agitate it a little bit just to make sure that the flavors are infusing into the water. All right, so we're back and this has been fermenting on the counter for one week and it started turning cloudy around day five, I would say, and it looks great. I did take a whiff of it the other day. It smells really good, but I'm excited to try it with the rice vinegar added. So this is just a smidge under four cups. I'm going to add the two tablespoons of rice vinegar. If you're making a single batch, it would be only one tablespoon of rice vinegar. And I have some plain white rice here that I'm going to try it on, which is a nice neutral flavor and it should give me a good idea of how it tastes. So that smells great. It smells really pickly and the added peppers, it just adds a really pleasant fragrance. I'm going to add the rice vinegar. All right, so I gave that a good stir and I'm going to try a little bit on the spoon first and then I'll try it on the rice to see how it tastes on food. So that's really unique. It's really, really good. It's not as spicy as I would expect it to be. And it almost tastes like a slightly spicy soy sauce. So I would use this anywhere I would use soy sauce if I were to eat dishes with rice or stir fries. And I'm gonna add a whole bunch of this to the rice because it's really, really flavorful and not at all overly spicy.
Mm. It's really, really good. I absolutely love this. I would highly suggest making this. You could definitely get creative and add more ginger or add different spices if you wanted. And I think this would taste great with different peppers as well. I would definitely make this with habanero peppers. I think that would really bring in a lot of kind of a fruity floral flavor and it would work very well. All right, so for storage, I'm gonna leave this in the fridge for up to a year and it'll definitely be consumed much sooner than that. And some people will tell you that they've had the same jar or bottle of Hawaiian chili pepper water for many years. Often people just top off the vinegar, leaving the chilies inside to infuse the flavor. So that's all there is to it, Hawaiian chili pepper water. I'll leave the recipe below, and I'll also leave a link to the Fiery Ferments cookbook that we found this recipe in if you want to try any of their other fermented recipes. And again, this is a very simple fermented recipe. If you're new to the world of fermenting, it's a great place to start. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Or soy sauce when you're out and about around in Hawaii. <laughs>